Hey there, beautiful humans. I'm back from a brief hiatus, and I think there's a book out there in our wonderful online costuming community that we need to talk about. Based on the numbers that I saw at the time of recording this, it is the number one best-selling needlework book on Amazon, and it's temporarily out of stock again. It's also the ranking number three on the New York Times bestsellers list for advice, how-to, and other miscellaneous stuff like that. And that book is going to be none other than Bernadette Banner's Make So Mend. Ta-da! By the time you're seeing this, it is out. I purchased my copy, so just a couple house cleaning things. This is not a sponsored thing by Page Street, Bernadette, or anybody else. These are just my opinions because I can. I purchased my own copy of the book. And as a result of that, if you are wanting to find some sort of monetary way to support the channel, there is going to be a couple affiliate links down in the description. If you would like to click on that to purchase the book, or some of the other books we're gonna talk about in conjunction with it, because it kind of molds in with those. Feel free, if that's not your jam, don't worry about it. You're watching and that is enough for me. So thank you for hanging out. But let's kind of get into some of this. So I really wanted to review this book simply because I end up teaching a lot of newbie sewers in my local community here. I have people that come in and they want to make these gorgeous elaborate dresses but have never sewn before. And my opinion is always if you want it bad enough, you will learn the skills to do it. But having a book like this from Bernadette is going to make that particular process way easier for people. So one of the first things we're going to do, kind of based on some booktube formats that I saw because it's been a minute since I've done a book review. Uh, we're gonna kind of go over the synopsis. I'll cover the table of contents and kind of what's in there. And then we'll go into some opinions. How does that format sound? All right, well, if nothing else, I even let you know what my plan is. If you've already picked this book up, by the way, definitely let me know down in the comments. What have you found most interesting about it so far? Learn the historically proven stitches every seamster needs with beloved historical fashion YouTuber Bernadette Banner. Whether you are just getting started with sustainable fashion and need to alter your new secondhand finds, or you want an introduction to sewing techniques for making your own clothes, Bernadette Banner's signature voice will guide you through the traditional stitches and techniques you need to extend the life of your favorite pieces and take fashion into your own hands. From tips and tricks on choosing your materials and preparing your fabric for sewing to more complex techniques such as mending small holes, adding pockets to garments, making your own buttons and beyond. This book has everything you need. Complete with step-by-step -step photos and insight into what alterations each sewing technique is best suited for, Bernadette walks you through every step of your sewing journey for added inspiration, this book also includes profiles on exciting voices in the historical sewing community and their perspectives on how taking fashion into their own hands has changed their lives for the better. Make Sew Mend is the perfect foundation for beginner sewers to start making their fashions their own. Alrighty. Kind of cool, right? We're going to do another flip through this way. So if that doesn't get you going, another fun thing in here, if you haven't seen Bernadette's channel, I will put a link down in my description for you to go check it out. But I love that she goes through and as a bit of fan service, she dedicates the book to Bertha Banner, who she has referenced quite extensively in this work as well as on her channel. So that was kind of fun. In the contents, we've got a featurette featuring Dandy Wellington. We've got an introduction, 
choosing and preparing materials, identifying fiber contents, anatomy of cloth, preparing fabric, cutting things out, thread marking, a tip about drying threads, pinning, and the fact that piecing is period. And that's just in the prep work. There's a feature about Claudia Voxt. Voxt? I'm very sorry if I'm butchering your last name, Claudia, if you ever see this. So the next section Bernadette goes over in here is going to be stitches. Sewing that stands the test of time, essential tools, some nice to have tools, starting and finishing threads, stitches to know, such as running stitch, basting, back stitch, half back stitch combination, whip stitches, herringbone stitch, and pad stitching, followed up by a feature by Zheng Chongqi. He's got a really great interview with Costuming and Color, which if I am able to, I'm going to try and put a link up here or down in the description. So that's really cool. She's going to go over some basic stitches and how to start and end things. There's applications and that's going to cover a lot of different ways to finish your edges. Whether it's pinking your finished edges, overcasting, binding, turning and felling, which I would probably call a flat felled seam, counter hems and French seams. She's also going to discuss the importance of pressing closures and in those closures she's going to go over buttonhole stitch, button loops, buttonholes, and making buttons out of your fabric as well as eyelets, lacing patterns, and hooks and eyes. So as one last thing where she's trying to get you to apply these, she also discusses different kinds of pleats, gathers, lace insertion, pin tucks, and smocking. So these are all techniques and stitches. If you're familiar with her channel, you may have seen her do in a video, but maybe not had a lot of detail on how. Which seems to be kind of the goal of this book, right? There's another feature at about Sophia Khan. Practical alterations such as rehemming, adding gussets to your sleeves if they're just not quite hitting where they're supposed to, adding pockets. Emberly Whitmore also has a featurette in here. And the last section is going to be all about carrying and feeding your clothes, making stuff that lasts and taking care of it. So that's going to be caring for your clothes, preserving, mending darning and patching as well as reattaching buttons and then Bernadette goes into her conclusion glossary and all of her end notes and such. So all in all for the space of this book she tries to cover a lot which I really appreciate about it. Now that you kind of know the materials covered why don't we spill some tea? We're gonna go over the stuff that I love. Um, I, just as sort of an outlook thing, whenever you're critiquing yourself or someone else, try and come up with three things that you love and then go into three things that you might adjust for next time. It's, it's a good way to give feedback. That's what I found. Anyway, life lessons aside, let's get back to this. So some stuff that I love. Bernadette actually knocks down a lot of the language barriers that you're going to run into with actual historical manuals like Birth the Banner, um, Household Sewing and Dressmaking. This was written in 1897 and it is a great book. If you are into 19th century sewing, I would highly recommend picking up a copy or downloading the free version since it's no longer in copyright. I just like having the printed copy and for the cost of downloading it and printing it out, I'll have a publisher bind it off for me. Um, if I got this a couple years ago, so if I can, I will try and link this exact edition. If I can't, I will find one that's comparable to put down in the description for you but she's kind of wordy let's put it that way banner um the 19th century writer is wordy clarification point 
We also have other books like this one, which was originally published by Butterick back in the day and Dover reprinted is also super wordy. It has a little more pictures in it, which can be kind of helpful, but the facts of it is, is that if you're not a new sewer, a lot of the historical manuals can be really mystifying. It's something that I ran into 15 years ago. I think that's when I purchased this. I was either just before high, or just as I was graduating high school or getting into college, it's been with me for a while. But when I first read through it and was really trying to get serious, whoosh, heaven help me. So I wish that there had been a manual like Bernadette's when I was starting out sewing all those years ago to help give me a foundation and a stepping stone towards some of these manuals. I found my other stepping stones. I, I did other things. It's not the only way that you could get there. Clearly I figured it out on some level. But for the next generation of sewists, I think it's going to be really helpful. In addition to demystifying the language of these, I love that Bernadette kind of lets you figure out how sewing is going to work best for you. There's no good or bad. There, she presents different sewing techniques very matter of fact. She's going to help you figure out what's best for you, figuring out your dominant hand, all of those sorts of things. So I very much appreciated that. And kind of tying into that, if I haven't shown you enough, she's got just gorgeous design. That may have been a lot of the publisher. I believe she did her own photography if I remember correctly though. But it's really well laid out and it's, it's not as efficient for my learning style as watching a video, but as a reference point, so I don't have to go and log into the internet and do all of that sort of stuff. This is a really handy book to have around. So my last thing that I really loved about this was she uses some examples from, I think it might be her private stash of historical garments. It's not all just her personal gnosis, trying to her research, that sort of thing. She's actually going to demonstrate some of these sewing techniques on some period garments so that you can see how it would have looked from another sewers. She references these so that you can see how these stitches look and how they have been used over time is my understanding. I, and I guess that kind of leads into the stuff I would have liked to see more of. Hey Bernadette, if those were from your private collection, I kind of would have loved to see that in a footnote. And I don't know if that was just omitted as no one thought of it, if it was a publisher thing. Ultimately, it is what it kind of is, but maybe as a footnote somewhere, that would be kind of cool. Um, I don't remember seeing any of the garments that were shared in here on a museum website, so that's why I'm leaning towards, I think they're from her private stash. My other critique, I think, would be when she's talking about washing fabrics. Um, and this is a hill I have debated hotly with other sewists quite a bit. You can wash silk. It's it like any other fiber that you're washing. You need to be washing it with intention rather than just, I'm going to wash everything because that's what we do with sewing or with washing machines. And Bernadette talks about that with the book. Um, with wools, she recommends doing some test swatches to see what it's going to look like after you're done washing it. I would recommend doing that with any fiber, linen, silk, etc. Um, cut it out with some pinking shears, um, measure out what that square should be in size, wash it, let's see how much shrinkage you get, what kind of change does it have with the texture. A lot of our fabrics are going to have different sizings that are sprayed into them or woven in that washing might just get rid of, whether it's silk, wool, linen, etc. So if that's something, that finish is something that you really like, treat the fabric as it is and dry clean it like they recommend. If 
you might want something that's slightly drapier or softer, it might be worthwhile trying to wash it. So that's my hill. I will die on it. Um, you can at me in the comments all you want. It's not going to change my mind. I have silk dresses that I wash. I just do it in a gentle cycle with a little bit of, I'll usually use woolite or like cheap, I don't know, shampoo because it's hair. It's a protein fiber. I kind of take the same approach when I wash wool. I use either shampoo or specifically designed stuff like woolite. So my last thing I would bring up is that it's more of this is what the book is and I knew it was going to be this way going in but for a lot of you based on polls and what gets watched on my page you, a lot of my audience really enjoys um, 16th 17th century a little bit of 18th century and definitely earlier periods a lot of the references that Bernadette makes are going to be to 18th, 19th, and very early 20th century sources. So there are some things that change, some things that don't when it comes to sewing and techniques. I still highly recommend this book as a primer on hand sewing, but as a just sort of reference to keep in mind after you get past those beginning steps, you might need to dive deeper into different sources than what they have in their bibliography and endnotes. So um, I don't think that's neither good or bad, but it's just knowing all of you as my audience and having seen the projects that you like to do on Instagram, I thought I would throw this information out there for you. Final thoughts, final couple ideas. Uh, I wanted to read you like the last paragraph that Bernadette has in here because I thought it summed up her book really well. Your clothes can help paint a clear picture of who you are and can help communicate to the world what you're about. You're far more likely to attract people who understand your particular brand of weirdness, who will comfortably permit you to be your true weirdest self without suppression if you're able to instantly recognize a similar brand of weirdness that they too have in themselves. Go forth and make stuff. I think that really gets to the crux of this. This book was written for me as a junior or senior in high school. This is a, the go forth and dress weirdly, alter your clothing, which is a great place to start learning how to sew. If you want me to pick up some or demonstrate altering some thrift finds, let me know down in the comments. It's it's a great relaxing thing for me because I've been doing it for so long. But again, highly recommend. No one's paying me to recommend it, but I do anyway. And I would love to make this a conversation. Uh, tell me what your thoughts about the book were below. Clearly, there's a bunch of you out there reading it. I would assume a bunch of you in my subscribers and other viewers probably have this book on order or are already working on it. So let me know. Such a manual as this will be useful not only to teachers but equally to learners anxious to make good use of the knowledge obtained from the lessons given in these classes. Femi L. Collar on Bertha Banner's Home Sewing with Home Dressmaking. 1897. So those were words that were said about household sewing with home dressmaking way back in the day. And I kind of think that they apply to Bernadette too. So congratulations Bernadette on a wonderful job and a beautiful book. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching and by the way if you haven't already, please do definitely click that like button. Let me know that this video was helpful, especially if you've watched it all the way to the end. And if you're interested in more sewing content and more history shenanigans, definitely click that subscribe button. I try to upload every week. Lately, it's been a little bit interesting, what with a broken leg and all, but we will get back on track as we always do. So in the meantime, have a beautiful day, my wonderful humans, and I will see you in the next one.
Bye. Okay. It has been a minute. Why is the battery dying? Again.